about uh, eigen value decomposition the best application is coming a spectral theorem and uh, uh, a spectral theorem it is based on eigen value decomposition of symmetric matrix that means all about that here you have to take a matrix a such that a transpose equal to a and if you are taking a symmetric matrix then we will see that the corresponding eigen value decomposition is actually we call it uh, a spectral theorem and it is having very interesting features like uh, uh, a symmetric matrix is always diagonalizable and uh, more than that you will get orthogonal eigen basis and uh, if you are having such kind of orthogonal eigen basis then we will talk about various applications of a spectral theorem so just uh, in order to start we will take a symmetric matrix and we will compute eigen pair of the symmetric matrix so consider a symmetric matrix a and suppose we are having two eigen vectors v1 and v2 uh, of the matrix okay eigen vector of matrix v with distinct eigen value so we are having uh, two set of pair it may have more than uh, two but we are not worrying about like those so first eigen pair is lambda 1 v1 and the second eigen pair is lambda 2 and v2 so and here being a symmetric matrix what we will see here pattern the first thing that regarding we know that computation of eigen value is the first uh, approach when you we talk about computation of eigen pair so uh, you will observe two things here first the eigen values would be real these would be real numbers it would be no more complex or something like that it would be real number despite of being a uh, polynomial equation so characteristic equation happens to be polynomial equation so here lambda 1 lambda 2 would be real numbers first that means a symmetric matrix is always having eigen values reals the second what we call about if you are having two distinct eigen values then correspondingly we will talk about the eigen vector v1 and v2 and uh, what is the uh, what is the relation between v1 and v2 if uh, these two eigen vector are associated with two different uh, eigen value then you will see see that the inner product between these two eigen vector would be zero that means v1 and v2 are perpendicular to each other or orthogonal to each other so that is you will see that uh, that property you will see for symmetric matrix it is not generally true for any a square matrix but it is true for symmetric matrix that is we say that v1 is perpendicular to uh, v2 in between if anyone is having any issue you can raise a question okay so perpendicular nature we observe here so suppose here uh, the proof is you can see it here we have a given eigen pair uh, lambda 1 v1 lambda 2 v2 okay so of a symmetric matrix a and where we observe that lambda 1 is not equal to lambda 2 so clearly we can say that v1 would be not not equal to v2 both are coming from two different eigen values so let us see here what is the inner product of v1 with a time v2 so if you are willing to compute the inner product between uh, v1 with a2 so as per definition of inner product it would be uh, v1 transport time uh, a to a v2 okay and we know that v2 is an eigen vector of the matrix a so here a time v2 would be written as lambda 2 time v2 and lambda is a scalar so you can take it out okay and so finally we are having inner product between v1 and v2 similarly if we talk about uh, uh, again inner product between v1 and a2 and we know that a is a symmetric matrix so a is a symmetric matrix what does it mean a transpose equal to a so here what we do we replace the uh, uh, a by a transpose due to symmetric nature of the matrix okay so here uh, inner product between v1 and a time v2 it would be equal to inner product between, between v1 and a transpose v2 why because a n equal to a transpose okay then we 
write the inner product that is v1 transpose a transpose v2 okay now if we see these two regarding the product, transpose of product so we can write it like a1 time v2 whole transpose into so this we will take in this side so time v2 and we know that a time v1 is what lambda 1 time v1 so what we observe here lambda 1 is a scalar so it will come out so only we are having inner product between v1 and v2 so same this inner product has written in this way and this one has written in this way uh, due to this matrix nature of the matrix okay so that means these two quantity are same so we will say uh, here uh, lambda 2 uh, times uh, inner product between v1 and v2 equal to lambda 1 times inner product between v1 and v2 if you take all uh, left hand side then we will have lambda 1 minus lambda 2 time inner product of v1 with v2 and we know that here the big given condition uh, lambda 1 is not equal to lambda 2 so the difference between these two uh, lambda can't be equal to 0 so by default this inner product must be 0 so what we got here we got inner product between v1 and v2 equal to 0 what does it uh, imply it implies that if lambda 1 is not equal to lambda 2 then v1 is perpendicular to v2 so it is for symmetric matrix only so that orthogonality we observe uh, with respect to eigen vector uh, uh, associated with different eigen values or distinct eigen value so that orthogonality we observe based on symmetric nature of the uh, matrix now if that is the situation let us talk about uh, one example so very simplest example i have taken here 3 by 3 matrix uh, where all entries are same uh, all entries every entry is one so definitely it is a symmetric matrix we can see it here so this one is a symmetric matrix and uh, if it is a symmetric matrix we will look for orthogonal eigenbasis whether this one is having orthogonal eigenbasis or not so we will compute here so how we will compute so uh, that means we are in order to get eigen vector we are solving the null space e lambda that one is null space of a minus lambda i i equal to zero we are solving it okay so in that process the first uh, eigen pair what we will get lambda 1 equal to 3 the solution in the last class we had already seen the this example we had already taken the first eigen value would be uh, 3 the second eigen value would be 0 and th four, third would be also 0 so 0 is coming two times so we are having three eigen value okay now if you are taking lambda uh, 1 equal to uh, 3 the correspondingly we had seen that the corresponding eigen vector is 1 1 1 okay but if you are taking lambda equal to 0 then we are getting two eigen vector why the corresponding eigen space happens to be a plane two dimensional plane so that's why we got two eigen vector in the basis basis of the eigen space so then these are the basis uh, the first basis we call it v2 the second basis we call it v3 so what we observe v1 is associated with uh, eigen value 3 and v2 v3 both are associated with eigen values 0 okay so easily we can say that v1 is perpendicular to v2 and v1 is also perpendicular to v3 but we can't uh, talk about perpendicular between v2 and v3 you can see that uh, it may not be perpendicular because the both are associated with the same eigen value okay so so their perpendicular nature between v2 and v3 we will not observe now let us we talk about uh, eigen decomposition nature so eigen decomposition it is coming like this way if you are taking s as a change of basis matrix uh, from a standard basis to eigen basis okay that means s is having first column v1 okay and second column as v2 okay and the third column is v3 so we are having change of basis matrix when you talk about uh, change of basis from a standard uh, to eigen basis and vice versa because we have already it is a 3 by 3 matrix that means it is an operation from r3 to r3 so and we got three eigen vector so easily we can say that we are having a candidate of uh, eigen basis it is a matrix 3 by 3 matrix so it define a linear transformation from r3 to r3 okay so we got change of basis matrix when we are changing a standard basis to uh, uh, 
what we call eigenbasis eigenbasis okay and with vice versa that eigenbasis we talk about eigenbasis eigenbasis always happens to be non standard eigenbasis if you are not taking uh, identity matrix eigenbasis we call it so s this one is s this one is s inverse and the basis change of basis and coordinate relation everyone know several time i have discussed okay so a time s means a keep as it is has a matrix s is written in the column form so take a inside so you will have first column as a time v1 second column a time v2 third column a time v3 so a time v1 is lambda 1 time v1 a time v2 is lambda 2 time v2 a time v3 is lambda 2 time v2 ek ek lambda 2 and lambda uh, 3 both are same so here we say that lambda 2 time v3 okay so what we do so in this matrix as i had told that matrix multiplication is generalization of linear combination so you can write here like this way uh, matrix having column v1 v2 v3 and the matrix diagonal matrix having column lambda 1 0 0 0 lambda 2 0 0 0 lambda 3 so this is we call it eigen value decomposition of the given matrix having these entries so here we observe s a time s equal to s time diagonal matrix where diagonal are coming from eigen values so s is always invertible so here we can write it a equal to s time s inverse so finding inverse is very difficult job if you are willing to find inverse of a matrix invertible matrix it is a really difficult task so either you have to go for elementary row operation uh, operation or some other technique okay uh, so we will here uh, it is a symmetric matrix why not we uh, do one thing that the eigen vector associated with uh, lambda 2 uh, equal to 0 uh, we will apply there gram smith orthogonalization so v1 will be easily normalized to u1 there is no issue v1 would be what uh, normalized to u1 by dividing norm of v1 with itself okay so u1 you got it but regarding u, uh, u2 and u3 you have to apply grammar smith orthogonalization so first u2 how you will get it by normalizing v2 uh, with its norm okay then u2 you will get and v3 how you will get taking uh, v3 per so u3 would be v3 per divided by norm of v3 per as in grammar smith orthogonalization we had already seen that so it v3 per would be perpendicular to v2 that also in grammar smith orthogonalization and we have to normalize uh, this v3 per by norm of v3 per so you will get u3 so here the, due to normalization property uh, u1 u2 u3 all these are orthonormal vector orthonormal that means perpendicular to each other and norm of each vector is equal to 1 so if we are taking here change of basis matrix in place of this we are taking here s as having first column u1 uh, second column u2 and third column u3 so again u1 is i what it is in the direction of eigen vector so u1 is an eigen vector u2 and u3 in the plane of oh, eigen vector v2 and v3 so again you uh, you will say that these two would be eigen vector of v okay the the given matrix a okay so here if you take a inside you will have a time u1 first column a time u2 second column a time u3 third column so here a time u1 is what lambda time lambda 1 time u1 a time u2 is lambda 2 time u2 uh, a time u3 is lambda 3 time lambda 3 time uh, u2 u3 it would be lambda 3 lambda 2 sorry lambda 2 and lambda 3 both are same so it would be lambda 2 lambda 2 time u3 so again we using uh, matrix multiplication as a generalization of linear combinations we can write uh, as a first matrix whose columns are u1 u2 u3 and the second matrix is coming as a diagonal matrix and what we observe in this matrix this one uh, what it is a matrix having orthonormal columns so we so here in that case we call s is an orthogonal matrix orthogonal matrix time lambda so we know that so from here we will write uh, a time a equal to s time lambda 
S inverse, but here S is orthogonal matrix, and we know that finding orthogonal inverse of orthogonal matrix is very simple. Just do transpose of that. So S inverse is equal to uh, transpose of uh, the orthogonal matrix because here S is y because S is orthogonal matrix. X is an orthogonal matrix. That's way. So uh, first we got three eigen vector, then we uh, Orthonormalize v2 and v3 to u2 and u3. Okay, an orthonormal matrix. It is S is an orthogonal matrix. What we call it? So this decomposition is much easier looks uh, due to orthogonal uh, orthonormal nature of the UIs. Okay. So what we observe here, we don't have to find inverse. This kind of representation we call it a spectral representation. A spectral representation here we don't have to find inverse of the change of basis matrix uh, eigen matrix you can call it it is coming with respect to eigen matrix so we don't need to find inverse of that we do just transpose y because s is an orthogonal matrix any question till now anyone is having any question any question If you are having any question, you can raise question. Otherwise, I am going to discuss a spectral theorem. So, a spectral theorem, it is coming as, so we are taking a matrix A, and we will say that it is having orthogonal, uh, it satisfies orthogonal theorem. If A is orthogonally diagonalizable, that means in the last example, what the second S matrix we had got orthogonal matrix, that means, uh, A, Simple so how we say that A is uh, a spectral theorem under a, a matrix A is orthogonally diagonalizable if there exists an orthogonal basis, orthogonal matrix S. Okay, such that S inverse A time S equal to here here S inverse is it is an orthogonal matrix so S inverse would be S transpose A time S. Okay, and it is diagonal diagonal matrix. So that means it is just we have taken we know that in the last case I had taken I had written a time s equal to uh, s time lambda so what we do do pre multiplication both side with s transpose s transpose is actually inverse okay because s is orthogonal matrix so what we will get s transpose uh, a time s equal to lambda so this is we call it diagonalization of uh, symmetric matrix so this we in the last case it was a symmetric matrix that's where we got that okay it is not always possible to get okay so here we will see in the proof uh, for orthogonal diagonalization of a matrix symmetry is very much is essential i have already mentioned that uh, s inverse a time s it would be equal to s transpose a time s if and only if a is a symmetric matrix so we can prove it here suppose a is orthogonality diagonalizable so then what we will observe so we can uh, transform a into identity matrix by multiplying s inverse with a and uh, s with the post multiplication with a okay so now what we do if we uh, simply uh, simplify it that means uh, do pre multiplication with s then s time s inverse would be identity matrix so we are getting s and in this side we are getting s time okay s time hmm. s time a, a lambda okay so further if you take this uh, this side that means we do need to uh, multiply s in transpose both side so then we are getting a equal to s time lambda s transpose okay now what does it imply if we do take transpose both side uh, we will get the same representation s time lambda s transpose and this one is what a matrix so and a matrix that means a transpose equal to a matrix so that means a spectral theorem says that the first part says that if a, uh, a is orthogonally diagonalizable then a would be a symmetric matrix now we will talk about the converse part okay that is orthogonally mm, that here we have already seen that uh, orthogonally diagonalizable uh, of a implies a is symmetric now we 
take A is a symmetric, then the matrix will have eigenbasis. In the previous case, we know that the eigenbasis we call it uh, having n number of eigenvector because A is n by n matrix B1, B2, B3, B3 up to Vn. Okay, and it can be transformed to orthonormal eigenbasis by using Gram Smith orthogonalization in the last case what we have done. So, these orthonormal basis element construct an orthonormal matrix S such that what we will observe A equal to S times lambda S inverse. Okay, so symmetric. Uh, nature of A implies this this decomposition orthogonal decomposition and uh, if you are proceeding with orthogonal decomposition that implies A is a symmetric matrix so we will take an example of symmetric matrix so here we are taking example 2 by 2 symmetric matrix the first column is 4 2 second column is, column is 2 7 so definitely we can say that here A transpose equal to A it is a symmetric matrix Okay, if that is the situation, now we will compute eigen pair. This one is a 2 by 2 matrix, so at uh, at most two eigen value we will get. The first eigen value is uh, 8, second eigen value is 3. With respect to eigen value 8, you will get eigen vector 2 minus 1. With respect to eigen value 3, you will get eigen vector 1, 2. So here V2 is associated with 3 and V1 is associated with 1, uh, 8. So both are uh, associated with two different eigen uh, values. So easily we can say that uh, these two are orthogonal to each other. So we are having a uh, eigen basis. The first basis is 2 minus 1, the second basis is 1, 2. So here we observe these two are orthogonal but not orthonormal. So in order to get orthonormally, uh, orthonormality, we have to normalize. So normalize, that means divide this by norm of this by v1 divide this by norm of v2 okay so this mat eigen basis it is what orthonormal eigen basis so here v1 and v2 are associated with two different eigen values by default perpendicular to each other and here we don't have to go for gram orthogonalization because these two are orthogonal already so just we have to normalize it okay and this is the desired ortho uh, normal eigen basis we call it so, uh, what easily in that case we can talk about A equal to uh, S time lambda S transpose. Very easy kind of decomposition here. What is lambda? What is S? First, you talk about normalized version of eigen vector. So normalize we had normalized it with one by uh, norm of v1. That one was uh, five square root of five. Okay, and v2 also having norm a square root of five. So a square root of five we are taking out, and here we are having two minus one one and second entry is two. So we got this uh, uh, orthogonal matrix, and what is lambda? Lambda is having it is a diagonal matrix. The first diagonal entry is coming as eight. That means eigen value of associated with b1 or u1. So eight zero, and the second row column is zero, and the second eigen value that one is three so we got the uh, 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 we got the uh, orthogonal decomposition of the symmetric matrix okay so if you, that is the situation so we will try to write a algorithmic pattern for establishing a spectral theorem that means orthogonal uh, decomposition of a symmetric matrix so what we do first we have to find eigen value of the given symmetric matrix then we have to find the basis of each eigen space in order to get eigen vector. Okay. Now then we will apply gram smith orthogonalization process uh, to get orthonormal eigen basis. Okay. Now uh, we will form eigen. So finally we will have orthonormal eigen basis u1, u2 up to un. Okay. Uh, for the matrix A. So by concatenating all these columns, 
orthonormal column we will get s and s is the orthonormal vector and we can say that uh, once we got this directly we can write a equal to s time uh, lambda s turn s transpose this is the algorithm to get orthogonal decomposition of a symmetric matrix so okay so another example we take it like this way here we are not giving explicit form of symmetric matrix so consider we are having uh, invertible symmetric matrix 2 by 2 uh, 2 by 2 symmetric matrix a and we have to prove that the linear transformation a time x it is mapping circle into an ellipse and we have to find the length of if you are talk, uh, talking about ellipse then ellipse is having two axes one axis we call it a smaller axis we call it a semi minor axis and uh, the longer axis we call it semi major axis so we will compute for ellipse we will compute semi minor axis and uh, semi major axis so it is very much simple that we have taken a unit circle that means it is a unique circle so whatever vector you will take on the circumference of unit circle it would be an uh, unit uh, a unit vector it would be a unit vector so if you are taking any point in the circle that can be written as a linear combination of uh, u1 and u2 call it u1 u1 so just uh, regarding this in 2d we have taken uh, orthonormal uh, eigenbasis uh, okay orthonormal eigenbasis with respect to the 2 by 2 matrix invertible to 2 by 2 matrix somehow we have computed so if you are taking any vector on the circumference it can be a linear it can be written as a linear combination in u1 and u2 and you know that from uh, simple harmonic motion so coefficient would be cos t uh, and sin t it would be and that this value is between 0 and 1 uh, uh, actually it depends upon what uh, situation you are taking it uh, clockwise or anti-clockwise okay now we uh, so this one is any general element in the circumference okay then we will find the image of any point on the circumference of unit circle so t of ut so t of ut it would be equal to as per uh, definition of linear transformation it would be what uh, it will scale u1 so cos time a times uh, cos t time a time u1 this one is a scalar it will simply come out a time u1 plus sin time a time u2 okay and u1 u2 are what it these are eigen orthonormal eigen uh, vector so a time u1 you will write lambda 1 time u1 and, and cos t is already there as in a, a coefficient okay likewise uh, lambda 2 time u2 and sin t is a coefficient because we have taken this kind of things so what does it represent here here simply if you talk about this one is coming in the unit circle but this one is not coming in the unit circle if uh, only cos t or sin t would be there then we would have mentioned that uh, this will come in uh, it is a circle so here we are getting two different lengths lambda 1 and lambda 2 here we are taking condition that lambda 1 is not equal to lambda 2 and lambda 1 is actually greater than lambda 2 so here lambda so you can say that u1 has been mapped to uh, this uh, lambda time u1 lambda time lambda 1 time uh, u1 so this one is with respect to semi major axis lambda 1 is greater than lambda 2 and u2 has been mapped to uh, lambda 2 time uh, u2 okay u2 is what here it is again orthonormal vector so length if you are willing to find take norm of this one so this length is lambda 2 and this length is lambda 1 so we call here lambda 1 is the length of uh, semi major axis uh, semi means half, half uh, major axis it is coming up to here but i am talking about semi major axis so it is length of this part one 50 percent of that and uh, this one is length of semi minor axis lambda 2 is the length of semi minor axis as per the transformation we can see it like that okay now uh, this one is all about a spectral theorem there are various application of a spectral theorem the one of them is quadratic form so quadratic form you can say that it is function of several variable and here it is coming as function of 
quality kind of function a quality kind of function so here the copy if you are having quality kind of function then we can get a quality representation of that function in term of a coefficient matrix and the coefficient matrix always would be a symmetric matrix so if that is the situation then we will take benefit of uh, uh, orthogonal decomposition of a uh, symmetric matrix in order to get uh, that uh, simple representation simple representation of quadratic form so quadratic form simply you can also say that <laughs> Uh, it is a quality equation you can represent a uh, generalized uh, what we call it conic section we can call it various thing but here we will try to get a specific pattern simplest form how it will be simplest form in ellipse simplest form in uh, okay uh, whatever quiet uh, that conic section we will have okay so quiet form is what we are taking a function from rn to r we call it it is in quiet form if it is linear combination of function of the form xi xj where i varies from 1 to n j varies from 1 to 2 1 to n okay so it is we call it this one is quite it term. so if i equal to j we call it xi square so and uh, anyhow it is multiplication of two coordinates so it is a quartic okay so if that is the situation the quartic form we can always write as x inner product of x with a time x a we call it a uh, coefficient of this quartic form and it is always happens to be a symmetric matrix okay symmetric matrix that that is the situation if it is a symmetric matrix we can always get uh, orthonormal eigen basis of a okay in order to uh, decompose a into uh, orthogonal form orthogonal decomposition that s time uh, lambda s transpose okay and we will take benefit of this decomposition okay so here if you are talking any uh, general x uh, in rn and we are having eigen basis orthonormal eigen basis u1 u2 up to un so x can be written as a linear combination of orthonormal eigen basis alpha 1 time u1 plus alpha 2 time u2 I like that okay and here we will write a time x we will again uh, take representation of x in term of orthonormal eigen basis okay so we are getting this one okay so just we take property of eigen pairs so here a time u1 would be lambda 1 time u2 u1 a time u2 is lambda 2 time u2 a time a un is lambda n time un okay so if you simplify then we are getting very simple form of the quartic equation so here we what we observe here we observe lambda 1 time alpha 1 square plus lambda 2 time alpha 2 square likewise just we are observing uh, what uh, x i uh, alpha i square term only alpha i so this representation is much simpler than this representation but remember that what are alpha i alpha i is actually it is a coordinate uh, it is a coordinate vector of a given arbitrary uh, vector with respect to eigen basis if you take as a non eigenbasis eigen basis this as an orthonormal eigen basis okay so the coordinate of x with respect to this beta what are the coordinate it is actually alpha 1 alpha 2 first we got uh, coordinate representation and here we just we take very simple form of uh, quartic function okay the last copy is alpha very simple form we are getting so this representation is much simpler than this representation one example we can see it here like this way if you are taking a quadratic function over r2 that means we are having two coordinate x is having two coordinate what are those coordinate x is having two coordinate first coordinate we call it x1 the second coordinate we call it x2 x1 and second coordinate is x2 okay it belongs to r2 okay so the q is what we have written in term of so you can say that it is written in term of x transpose a time x a is the coefficient matrix of the quadratic form so easily we can see that here this one would be uh, this factor it is coming as a uh, 
if you multiply x transpose with x itself x on the square this one x2 with the uh, itself x2 trans uh, this one is off diagonal element what we call it okay x1 so here if you see this quadratic form this we can return in this form yeah in this x transpose a time uh, x okay so here this is the coefficient matrix if you see coefficient matrix it is a symmetric coefficient matrix okay if it is a symmetric coefficient matrix easily we can get eigen vector uh, and eigen value Lem first eigen value is 9 and the corresponding eigen vector is 2 minus 1 the second eigen value is 5 and corresponding eigen vector is 1 2 so we can see that v1 is perpendicular to v2 okay but here it is not a uh, orthonormal in nature so we have to normalize it by dividing the corresponding norm okay we don't have to apply here grammar arithmetic uh, orthogonalization why because uh, v1 v2 are associated with two different eigen values so by default those two would be uh, perpendicular to each other orthogonal to each other just we have to normalize so in that process we got u1 uh, it is 2 minus 1 and we normalize it by a square, norm of this one that one is square root of 5 likewise we got u2 so here u1 and u2 uh, are orthonormal eigen basis of r2 uh, thanks to the coefficient matrix okay we got it so with respect to this uh, orthonormal eigen basis what is the form of quadratic uh, function so quadratic function was x transpose a time x and we are taking any arbitrary point x and we find coordinate of this one with respect to eigen basis non standard eigen basis okay that we call it uh, having uh, two coordinate first coordinate is uh, alpha 1 the second coordinate is uh, alpha 2 okay alpha 1 and alpha 2 so if you apply this kind of situation and beta is what that beta is a non standard uh, basis uh, with respect to orthonormal i then vector that means first one is u1 the second one is u2 that we have already seen okay in the competition in the last slide we have already seen okay so x transpose a time x it would be what x we are writing a, 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 a here uh, we are representing this one in term of mm, orthonormal eigen basis so it would be alpha 1 time u1 transpose plus alpha 2 time u2 transpose and here alpha 1 time a time u1 plus alpha 2 time a time u2 so this one is fine there is no issue but here a time u1 we will write it lambda 1 time u1 a time u2 we will write it lambda 2 time u2 and if you simplify then we are getting it lambda 1 time alpha 1 square plus lambda 2 time uh, alpha 2 square so lambda 1 we have already computed that one is eigen first eigen value that one is 9 and the lambda 2 is second eigen value that one is 5 okay. okay so we got here the quadratic form in very what canonical form very simple form here we don't observe any off diagonal element just we observe diagonal element so this representation always looks very interesting that means we say that here we have written in this form of coefficient matrix at diagonal matrix and that means it is coming like this way here alpha 1 alpha 2 okay, transpose transpose uh, here coefficient matrix is a diagonal matrix so the first diagonal entry is 9 second diagonal entry is 5 it is coming with respect to orthogonal decomposition of the uh, symmetric coefficient matrix times alpha 1 alpha 2 okay so this representation always look fine any question till now if no question i will proceed further so further you will talk about few a specific characterization of quadratic form in term of the symmetric coefficient matrix a okay so we are having a quadratic form equal q of x equal to x transpose a time x where a is a symmetric coefficient matrix so we say a is positive definite so here quadratic form and it introduces a definiteness of the matrix that means uh, if it is a real number then we can say that real number may be positive may be negative or may be uh, zero so same thing if you are having a symmetric matrix then we can talk about positive definite negative definite or indefinite kind of things okay so 
definiteness is of a matrix is coming so definiteness of a matrix is always uh, characterized by the corresponding quadratic form if you define x triangle t time x okay so we see the coefficient matrix uh, a is positive definite if q is positive so it is a quadratic function so quadratic function may be positive or negative for any non zero x if q is always positive for any non zero x then we say that the a given matrix coefficient matrix a is what it is a positive definite matrix now the given coefficient matrix a we will call it positive semi definite if the corresponding quadratic form q of x equal to x transpose a time x is non negative that means uh, qx is greater than equal to 0 for any uh, x any non zero x also you can call it okay so in that case a will call it positive semi definite that means it includes 0 as well okay now a will call it negative semi definite negative definite if the quadratic form uh, quadratic form uh, q of x is always negative for any non zero x so it is qx is always negative for any non zero x in that case the coefficient matrix a will call it a negative definite likewise the coefficient matrix will call it negative semi definite if the quadratic form is a non negative okay so non positive that means less than equal to 0 for any x okay any x less than equal to 0 and uh, a will call it indefinite if uh, qx take either positive or uh, negative positive as well as negative values okay so in that case uh, the matrix would be indefinite in nature okay indefinite in nature so in the last case we had taken uh, a matrix uh, like uh, 4 2 2 7 so it is a symmetric matrix so here the corresponding quadratic form in uh, orthogonal eigen basis uh, it was written as q of x it was written finally as uh, it is having eigen value uh, 9 and 5 so it, it was written as 9 time alpha 1 square plus 5 time alpha 2 square okay so this quantity if you talk about it is always greater than 0 always greater than 0 if you take alpha 1 alpha 2 uh, non zero it is always greater than 0 so we can say that this matrix is a positive definite matrix it is always greater than equal to 0 if you are not taking alpha 1 alpha 2 0 if you are taking non zero then it would be always greater than 0 so the given matrix symmetric matrix it is a positive definite matrix okay now further we will prove that that uh, consider an m by n matrix we are taking rational matrix we will claim that the quadratic form as a an a square of norm of ax it is also a quadratic form why because if you simplify a square of norm it is what actually equal to inner product ax with itself and if you simplify it is coming x transpose a transpose ax so if you coefficient matrix of this uh, quadratic function is what a transpose a and here a is any rectangle matrix so if a is any rectangle matrix then a transpose a would be always a symmetric matrix a is any rectangle matrix we are taking so a would be not a symmetric matrix but multiplication of a transpose with a would be always a symmetric matrix so the derivation is very simple you can see it here if you take transpose of this quantity and then it would be equal to a transpose a so that means if you are taking any rectangle matrix then you got a uh, symmetric matrix that symmetric matrix is a transpose a whether a is uh, symmetric or not or a square or not you don't have to worry about that a transpose a would be always a symmetric matrix any question till now okay fine then so it is a symmetric matrix if you don't have any question i will proceed further 
so definiteness and eigenvalue so a symmetric matrix is positive definite if and only if its uh, uh, eigenvalues are positive so here in this example uh, first eigenvalue is 9 second eigenvalue is 5 both are positive so by default this matrix we can say, see that it is a positive definite a curly uh, greater than we write it like this way it is not greater than we write it like this way curly so greater than uh, 0 so it is a positive this matrix is positive why because the both eigenvalues of this matrix happens to be positive so positive uh, definite matrix we will call it okay there are other form of deciding uh, definiteness of a matrix and that we come up to compute uh, uh, some principal minus so if you compute principal minor and uh, all principal minor are positive then the corresponding matrix would be positive definite and if it changes sign alternately then negative definite okay and negative negative to positive or positive to negative something like negative to positive something like that then that would be uh, uh, that will decide the negative definiteness of the matrix so we are taking a matrix a uh, you can see that this one is a symmetric matrix okay so find uh, what is first principal minor that means we are taking principal minor with one one order 1 1 size so the, this one now uh, what is 9 9 is always greater than 0 the second principal minor we are taking it a2 that means um, this we are taking block so to compute the determinant of this one it is equal to 64 that one is also greater than 0 now uh, principal minor of size 3 take it that means determinant of whole given matrix that one is 89 that one is also greater than 0 so here we don't have to compute eigenvalue eigenvalue computation is time taking process here computing principal minus is much easier than computing eigenvalue so computing principal minor we can say that if all principal minus are greater than 0 then we can say that the corresponding given matrix happens to be um, positive definite matrix okay and there are various other uh, concept we can talk about that uh, principal axis of the quadratic form we can talk about so principal principal axis so first you are having uh, uh, what uh, a asymmetric coefficient matrix in the quadratic form then you will easily get uh, eigen uh, vectors eigen basis you will get uh, we will call it uh, v1 uh, v2 v3 and it will go up to uh, up to vn okay and from there we can come up with orthonormal eigen basis u1 u2 up to vn so here this may not be in general orthonormal but here uh, through grammar smith orthonormalization we can get orthonormal eigen basis okay so get the orthonormal eigen uh, basis u1 u2 okay okay then apply uh, matrix a over this so here you will call a time u1 is the uh, first principal axis a time u is the second principal axis you are getting if you multiply a with uh, ui you are getting principal axis a time u2 second principal axis likewise a time u is the last principal axis and the corresponding eigen value we will talk about length of those principal axis length of those principal axis okay uh, length of those simply we get it like that okay so consider a curve in rn and the quality curve we are defining it like this way so easily we can say that what is the coefficient matrix a b b c that means it is a symmetric matrix if both eigenvalues are positive then we say that c and both are positive and lambda 1 is not equal to lambda 2 then we will see that it is an ellipse a circle is a very special case of ellipse when lambda is equal to lambda 1 is equal to lambda 2 so that is a situation okay and now if you take one eigenvalue is positive another eigenvalue is negative then we will say that c would be hyperbola it would be in hyperbola so all this conic section you can get it from eigenvalue uh, properties okay the last application of a spectral theorem will initiate here that happens to be singular value decomposition so singular value decomposition is really interesting uh, regarding 
image processing and various other kind of problems okay so what is happening that if you are taking uh, a rectangular matrix m by n and for that matrix we can't talk about computation of eigenvalue eigenvector because m is not equal to n so how will get uh, eigen orthonormal eigen basis kind of things so what is happening that if we are having a rectangular matrix just i had discussed here uh, in the previously i have discussed if a is a rectangular matrix uh, okay then uh, a transpose a would be always a symmetric matrix okay a transpose a would be symmetric matrix so what do you do uh, find the eigen values of this uh, a transpose a and define uh, this suppose the lambda 1 lambda 2 up to lambda uh, this one is m, a is m by n matrix so a transpose a would be uh, what it would be n by n matrix so it is symmetric matrix simply uh, n by n symmetric matrix in short we denote it as n okay so so it will have uh, n real eigen values if we just forget about we include algebraic multiplicity of those eigen value okay so n eigen values of a transpose a are correspondingly we are having uh, n eigen vector we call it v1 v2 okay so remember that here a v1 v2 v3 all these are eigen value of eigen vector of a transpose a it is not eigen vector of uh, matrix given matrix a it is uh, actually eigen vector of uh, a transpose a and the correspondingly eigen lambda 1 lambda 2 are eigen values of a transpose a so how we will relate a transpose a with a so we will define here uh, because a transpose a is symmetric so by default this value would be greater than or equal to 0 okay so we will define sigma i so what is sigma i sigma i is actually square root of lambda i that means eigen value of a transpose a so you can easily see that a transpose a is product of two matrix so one kind of quadratic thing also we can say that so uh, so in order to get over the quadratic things we took a square root of lambda i okay that a square root of lambda i we call it singular value of the matrix a okay and correspondingly uh, we'll orthonormalize this one okay because it is related with uh, symmetric matrix and so this would be what singular vector of the matrix a so, so the square root of lambda i we call it a singular value of the given matrix a and um, vi is, we call it singular vector of the mm, singular vector of the given matrix a okay so that means it satisfy here uh, vi is happens to be singular vector happens to be eigen vector of a transpose a that means this condition definition of eigen vector okay and uh, there is a property of a transpose a and a into a transpose both are having same set of eigen vectors same set of non zero eigen vector what we call it and eigen values non zero eigen values okay so that relation can be easily established that one is not a difficult task and uh, whether you go with a transpose a or uh, a into a transpose you have to see which one is a smaller whether m is a smaller and n is a smaller based on that you will proceed with that okay so anyhow you will get um, sigma is and v is those we call it singular value and singular vector of the given matrix okay so here uh, first we need to compute singular value singular vector and here we know that if you are taking two by two matrix definitely you can see here this matrix is not symmetric it is a rectangular matrix it is not symmetric matrix so how you will call it uh, how you will call it uh, the, uh, how you will compute eigen value of this one so we can't say that whether it is having uh, positive only positive eigen value or something like that so we will not proceed with that uh, because it is a mm, uh, non symmetric matrix that we have taken so uh, when you are going for uh, singular value decomposition either you proceed with non symmetric matrix or rectangular matrix so one example here we have taken non symmetric matrix so you so find the eigen, orthonormal eigen basis v1 v2 and then find the image of uh, v1 v2 so here v1 v2 ortho, orthonormal then uh, orthogonal uh, these are uh, orthonormal then correspondingly image of vi would be also orthogonal okay the orthogonal means it is not uh, 
normal uh, unit vector that due to lambda we have to we need to normalize okay then we will talk about that um, image of unit circle in the domain of space into ellipse mapping of uh, unit circle to uh, ellipse why but uh, v1 v2 are ortho uh, normal but l of v1 and l of v2 are not ortho normal these are just orthogonal okay this kind of things okay 